Welcome to Scott Cooks, y'all. Not doing any cooking today. We're just walking around the yard doing yard work. Figured I'd show you a few things. Uh, if you saw the other video earlier, you saw my garden work. And I'll keep you updated on that. I think it's fun. It's part of food. You know, if you're going to cook, you should probably be growing stuff, right? Let me show you what we got going on here in the fruit department. Okay, these are blackberries. Well, right now, they're blackberry plants. There is a lot of them here. They're growing up the side of my pool. Uh, I have this big open area here. And uh, a friend gave us a couple tiny little blackberry plants about four years ago. And this is what they've turned into after four years. And I'm going to tell you what. We get blackberries that, not that big, but about that big around. Giant blackberries. In fact, I've got several gallons of them in the freezer right now from last year. I'll be making jam with them. And uh, they are just looking fantastic this year. And these plants will be loaded with blackberries. I'll be picking blackberries for months. And, um, you know, a lot of people aren't into blackberries because of the seeds. Uh, seeds don't bother me that much, but you can do a lot of cooking with blackberries too. Let's see what else we got growing out here. All right, to most of you, this probably looks like a big old patch of dead grass which for the most part it is. But look what's buried in all of the dead grass. These are strawberries. And they are everywhere. They are everywhere in here. And these grow the sweetest strawberries I have ever eaten in my life. This will be the third year of strawberries here in my patch. This patch it goes, it's, this thing is built up. To, I just planted them up next to this old old barn I got here. Look at all those growing on this side. They get a little more sun over here. All that green stuff you're seeing, except for a couple of weeds, are strawberries. And uh, I make strawberry jam, strawberry pie. In fact, I will link in the description to this to one of my recipes from a year or so ago where I came out here and picked some of these strawberries and made a strawberry pie on my foodie channel. Let's see what else we can find. Okay, this has nothing to do with food, but hey, I'm walking past them. And these bloomed this morning, so I'll show them to you. Red tulips are up. Is that nice or what? I had forgotten we planted them. We had yellow ones earlier. These just came out this morning. I know. They're not edible. But still, there they are. This is a rose bush. Loaded. Nice, tight, small roses. About this big around. And uh, my cactuses. Oh, look. About to bloom. And my cactuses over here, these get giant, huge yellow blooms on top, big as your hand, uh, towards the end of the year. Alright, these are my peach trees. This is the main peach tree. The blooms are almost off of the tree. These blooms were huge pink blooms a couple days ago. Um, between the wind and them just naturally falling off. So uh, this thing is going to be loaded with peaches. There's one of the flowers still there. And about three years ago, we got a volunteer. I didn't plant this, uh, and I figured, ah, it's not going to do anything. But lo and behold, it is now six feet over my head. And look at that. Still got a beautiful peach bloom on it. So I don't think we're going to get peaches yet off of this small one. If we do, I'm probably up at the top. Uh, but we're going to get a lot of peaches on this big peach tree. And again, I have probably 20 quarts of peaches in my freezer and I make peach cobbler and uh, chickens and peaches and stuff like that all the time again not food but my Japanese maple has just turned very bright red over the last couple days is that one of the most beautiful trees or what I love this Japanese maple tree okay this is one of my apple trees it's called a dwarf apple. These are uh, golden apples, I believe. And look real close right there. That is going to be an apple in several months. And so is that. So this tree is looking good. This is the fifth, uh, fourth year for this tree. This was planted by uh, one of the local uh, nurseries. And I see a problem already. See that on the bark? Deer did that deer have been up here rubbing against the tree they'll kill it I'm gonna have to wrap the tree with something dang on deer you know a lot of people think deer are fun to look at and they're all pretty and all 
I'll tell you what, if you live out in the country, they're as bad as any old rodent you can find. They eat and destroy everything. Apple tree number two. Same size. Uh, one might be yellow and one might be red. I honestly can't remember now. Uh, this one has some scratches on the bark, but that is old. So that was probably last year. This is a dwarf Bartlett pear tree. Just bloomed. Gorgeous. I love these blooms. This tree suffered quite a bit of damage in an ice storm we had a couple years ago. Uh, and I'm very happy to see that. That's why I got all these strings on it. I was tying it up, trying to save it. And I'm very pleased to see that. This is my second pear tree, and I think it's dead. I think the ice storm completely took it out. I see, um, well, it's not completely dead. Look at that. All the way down at the base. But it'll take five years before that gets anywhere, if it lives at all. I'm not going to touch it. If it's going to live, I'm going to let it grow. Okay, guys, this giant tree, as far as I can reach, is my cherry tree. I have yet to get a cherry off of this. This will be year five. Uh, it is Most of the blooms are gone. It is absolutely loaded with leaves and blooms again. This is a very large tree. Um, planted it five years ago. Still got a couple blooms on it. Cherry blooms. And there's a second one. Just as big. Load it with the blooms. Wow, look at this. And this cherry tree, the second one, is severely damaged from the deer. They are tearing this bark up. Oh boy, that is bad right there. Oh man, I got to get a fence around this today. They're gonna they're gonna kill this tree. Can you see that? This is another pear tree. This tree is probably focus, focus. This tree is probably 15 years old. Look how tall that is. This is not a dwarf pear tree. This is a real pear tree. Uh, this will grow pears. And this year should be its best year ever because I cut down a bunch of trees around it due to that ice storm. They fell. And you can probably see all the patches in the ground right there. Uh, they were all giant trees everywhere. I cut them all down. All right. Uh, let's see what's left. Uh, this is the chestnut tree. And yes, I do get chestnuts. In fact, I will show you on the ground. These are chestnuts. Ouch. And they are sharp as can be. Squirrels have gotten all these. Uh, but yeah, I get a lot of chestnuts. And also, this is a black walnut tree. And I believe that one next to it is an English walnut tree. That concludes <laughs> your tour of my fruit trees. I know it had nothing to do with cooking, but hey, if you're all quarantined and locked down, something to watch, right? So this is what Scott Cooks does while he ain't cooking and can't go to work right now. I gotta mow the yard. I gotta do the trimming. I gotta take care of all my trees. Um, I'll be out with the fruit tree spray. It's like an oil. Start spraying that stuff up. Can't spray them when the blooms are on. The blooms are almost off. So I'll be spraying probably next week bug control all natural by the way um, I only use natural spray now in the garden sometimes that natural stuff don't won't do the job and every once in a while you got to hit it with some seven especially the leafy stuff like the cabbage as long as you wash the heck out of it and boil it up real good it's not gonna hurt you if it's not even gonna be there it'll wash off anyway take care guys uh, look forward to showing you some more actual food videos shortly